First of all, I'd like to thank, of course, the uh, sponsors, DBS, especially for putting all these together and uh, giving us the opportunity as uh, speakers to speak here. So, well, uh, my name is Janice Wong. I run the 2AM Dessert Bar. And uh, it's been around for five years. We focus on the desserts paired with wines. And uh, basically, for me, when I started this out, I was 24. And four years later, instead of opening up another dessert bar or another franchise, I decided to do a lab. Now, the lab is my creative space, and uh, we invite a lot of guest chefs over, also a lot of um, chefs around the world to collaborate with us and to discover new techniques. And then we share these techniques on the website, um, through books as well, to the rest of the world. And uh, this project here is nonprofit as well, and uh, the idea is we are constantly recreating our dishes. We're constantly, you know, being inspired by other dishes and then recreating it. I mean, how many creme brulees have you had in your life? A hundred? I, I had a lot and I was kind of fed up. And for me, inspirations always come through frus frustrations. And so I decided to open up a space where I can have no reference. And uh, just imagine putting flour, sugar, water in front of you. What can you create? What can you do? So this is the entrance of the lab. Um, it houses a thousand flavors. Um, for me, I wanted to build the soul of the lab so that we can be inspired to cook, seeing all these ingredients, tasting, feeling. I mean, it's a very emotional ride. I cannot explain further. But, um, so, yep. Beauty and the broken. Uh, for me, this topic is very close to my heart. Um, that is also the reason why I started out the book as well. Um, there's so much beauty in a broken piece of rock. There's so much beauty in a, in a fallen leaf. And I'll explain a bit further. So this is a picture of a flower. Uh, this is a nasturtium flower. So I've taken a very beautiful big nasturtium flower and ripped off all the petals. And you can see also later um, through, through the book, there's a lot of uh, flowers that have been ripped off and stuff. And it's not, very, it's not a very common practice. But what if, what if you rip off all these petals and put this on the dish? It is still very beautiful. And again, I emphasize there's so much beauty in the broken. And this is actually the, the stem of the flower. So what is this? This is the uh, marshmallow. And uh, when I was making marshmallow one day, I decided to you know, be playful and kind of use my hands and, and kind of sh stretch it. Again, it gives me so much inspiration. Do marshmallows have to be in Hershey form? You know, squares and stuff. What if marshmallow could be in any other form? And I'll explain a bit further in the next few slides. But again, beauty in the broken, so important. So the key ingredient of a dream is imagination. And I really want to share my line, your world is your imagination. So a year and a half ago, I went blind. I went, I went sightless for 72 hours. I decided to strip myself out of uh, sight and uh, wear these uh, plasters on my eyes. And I, le I, I led a normal life. I went out, I, went, I took the MRT, I ate. And uh, for girls out there, this is a great diet program because you only eat when you need to eat and you drink when you need to drink. So I felt extremely great for 72 hours. And you know, the, the thing about it is when you strip off one sense, four other senses become stronger. And it's really amazing. I know I challenge you today to close your eyes for maybe an hour. And your world is your imagination because your imagination is free. It's free for all, there's no rule, there's no law, no one is stopping you. I don't have my mother saying, hey, you know what you're doing. So I was dreaming, I was dreaming of woes in my head, black and white, I was dreaming of uh, topsy-turvy. You know, what if you have never seen a glass before? What if I've never seen a mic before? And I'm holding this mic now. So I'm gonna speak to you blind for the next 30 seconds. And basically, if I've never felt this mic before, if I've never seen human beings in my life, what, how would you look like? 
And then I start imagining and I start creating. And I'm now creating different images in my head. And this is amazing because then you're being creative and you're not recreating. So I was constantly challenging myself for the next, I mean, for, for 72 hours. And then the inspiration for the book, uh, Perfection and Imperfection, which I'm just gonna take it up. So this book is now sold, but uh, there's no two books that are the same. The front cover is hand-torn, uh, Perfection and Imperfection. So it's a collection of um, 30, de 30 desserts uh, for the past four years at 2 a.m. dessert bar. So this is a piece of rock. Um, basically, I was working in San Sebastian. In the, in the afternoons, I would take my walk. And um, in Spain, people would be taking photos of the beautiful sea in San Sebastian. And there were all these broken corals lying around. It's so beautiful just looking at this broken rock. And that was the inspiration. I took a photo. That was the inspiration for my next dish. So this is, sorry. This is actually the, um, the dish chocolate water. And what we have here is basically 50% um, chocolate, 50% water, and aerated. And then I sprayed it, and it makes it look like rocks. So we've had this dessert for the past three years, and it's been our signature. So again, inspirations can come from anywhere. I mean, this is a piece of rock, and you can create forms that are natural. So that is the inside of the dessert. And basically, you know, you can see all the air pockets. So again, getting an inspiration and thinking, how can I create a dish or how can I create a texture with that inspiration? And then you start conceptualizing a technique that you can create holes in the chocolate mousse. And it's very healthy, I guarantee you. It's, there's no sugar added and no cream and no milk. Again, we design, I design a lot of um, dishes for women. So do come to the bar. Now the next thing is I want to share is uh, colors. This is also another signature dessert of mine. Um, the painting is actually below. It's my first painting, Shades of Purple. So I started challenging myself again. Painting with one color. If you work with one color, you don't have a thousand ingredients in front of you. Instead, you have a hundred. And then you start having a lot of flavor pairings. Again, this is very important because through my life, my mom has been feeding, my mom and dad has been feeding me, you know, different ingredients. And having a very rich flavor memory bank is very important when you create. So when I had a, a hundred ingredients that are purple in front of me, or inspired by the color purple, then you start putting together a savory element, which is purple potato, making it slightly salty. And it actually goes really well with cassis, which is black currant. And then putting flavors of lavender and uh, blackberries, and so then I started giving the dessert a characteristic, a personality. And I said, hey, this is so feminine, so delicate. And soon we started serving this at the bar. And um, I mean, the idea is to work with one color and be challenged by it. Then I started working with orange. Um, for me, orange reminds me of mi Middle East. And I started putting together flavors of curry, flavors of mango, flavors of turmeric. Again. It might sound weird to you, but it does go together. So next, you know, green for me is very serene, very tranquil. Um, and I wanted to, to create a dessert that is so clean and so calm. Um, this is also featured in a book. The recipes are there, so you're, you can feel free to view it. But again, working with colors can be very interesting. And uh, I started working with shades of tan. For me, I love mustard yellow, one of my favorite colors. And what I wanted to share today is we made a perfect chocolate bar, and then we smash it. And I, I, I totally enjoy doing that. Why do we have to serve a perfect chocolate bar? I mean, you have perfect chocolate truffles every day, or not, maybe not every day, but you do eat perfect you know, truffles and perfect chocolate bars, but does it have to be perfect? What if there was a dent? Is there still beauty in the dent? You know, what is your world like? What, what is, what is your, your vision? I mean, do you see things, you know, perfect? As in it, it must be a perfect square and that's perfection to you? So that's why I wanted to share about perfection and imperfection. 
Now next, imagine. Inspiration again is all around us. I think the one question I always get asked uh, through the media is, what is your inspiration? Where do you get inspirations to continue to create? I mean, we've been creating nonstop for five years. How do we do that? Honestly, it is quite tiring, I have to say, but we get our inspiration from everywhere. I can be inspired by this mic. I mean, it's wired. It's, it's, it's kind of messed up, you know, in a way. And, and I can get inspiration from this. I can get inspiration from just standing here and having a sea of people in front of me and create a dish out of it. So again, I mean, open your eyes and just see what's around you. It's really amazing. So I started taking a simple objects, like a brush, instead of scratching chocolate. And then you get the wood-like texture out of it. So again, what I want to share is taking simple objects, like a pen, a needle, a brush, and scratching it or, or, or just you know rolling it, folding it. You'll be amazed at what you can create. Sometimes you don't need $3,000, $5,000 worth of equipment to create. And then, so earlier on, I shared with you these pictures of these marshmallows and these uh, flowers and stuff. So I started doing something else. You know, a year ago, I launched my book and I wanted to create an, and, um, a kind of uh, ambiance where people can enjoy the book. How do you do that? How do you do that for an audience of 400 people? I'm really sorry today I didn't make any edible art for you, but <laughs> next time. And uh, so basically, how do, it, how, how do you do it? You know, most book launches are based on demonstrations or talks and stuff. So then I started thinking, what if I made life-size, you know, edible sculptures out of these uh, pages of my book? So I started conceptualizing seven to eight different kinds of edible art pieces. Imagine if I had one marshmallow, and I always think 5,000 times. Sometimes if I, have, if I have one egg in front of me, I think 10,000 times. What is the egg going to look like if I have 10,000 eggs in front of me? It's going to be amazing. So then again, taking one marshmallow and taking the idea of that, you know, dreaming these um, sweets and basically creating an entire marshmallow ceiling out of it. I wish I had the opportunity to do this today, but to fill the entire ceiling here in marshmallow, how fun would it be? All of you kind of had to work for your food, you know? So, so basically flavoring all these, um, you know, these edible art, edible sweets, and then started making these dripping uh, marshmallows are also inspired by icicles. So again, 400 people got to enjoy this art piece. It was, uh, I think, page 87 of my book or something. And it was really amazing. It was an amazing experience for people because they remembered this. And then again, going back, working with one color. You know, I work with one color on a plate. I work with one color on a piece of art. But what if I made a life-size wall? You know, here it's shades of brown on my right. What if I made a life-size wall of chocolate based on shades of brown? You know, what would, what would, it, what would I create? So then this is a life-size, again, um, edible art sculpture based on shades of white. I love the purity of white. And when I started making this wall, it was flavored with um, those different textures of marshmallows, meringues, um, chocolate. Uh, tapioca, I mean, what have you. It was so exciting for people to keep tasting different tastes each time they have the wall. And it's, it's so pure and so, mag mag um, I would say, magnifying, I guess. So then, next. Then I started, um, I mean, you know, creating things that are not in forms. I mean, I love the natural state of things, just letting my gummies kind of flow. Gummies, again, do not have to be in teddy bear shapes. I mean, no one ever said that. You, can, you, you have to eat it in teddy bear shapes. What if I started making stretchable gummies, and, and I give you my gummy, and I start stretching it, and we're gonna have so much fun together. You know, so what if I started creating gummies, free, free form, and just pouring it, which is what we did. Started putting these gummies, making gummies, and pouring it onto sheets, acetate sheets, and then putting it on the wall and pasting on the wall. So then everyone could start, again, enjoying gummies. You know, not giving out gummies from my hand to your hand, but instead you kind of have to interact with a piece of art. So this is another chocolate wall, which I did, um, you know, a few months ago. And uh, this was six hours after the event. Again, the perfection and imperfection of things. 
you don't have to, to create a perfect piece of chocolate. And this is edible art for you, where it's so beautiful. I mean, people could be constantly eating off it. The art is constantly evolving, and it still stays as a piece of art, because there's no rule to art. And that's the beauty of it. And that's people interacting with the pieces of art. So again, you know, maybe if you challenge yourself and shut off your sight, you know, what will your world be like? Would you be creating art pieces like this? Or would you be maybe sitting on your desk and start drawing different pieces as well? You know, just imagine, what if you have, you have never seen colors in your life? What, what, would you be, uh, what, what would your world be like? Everything black and white? So I mean, I love doing this in my head sometimes. I, and, and someone's talked about weird just now. Yeah, well, it's not too weird, really. So again, creating interactive pieces of art. Uh, this is an acrylic board in the middle, and you see a lot of fish tubes. Uh, we basically injected all these uh, flavored jelly into these tubes and having people interact with it. So when you saw it, people always think, oh, I cannot, it's a piece of art. I cannot taste it, I cannot interact with it. But we challenge you today to create art pieces that you can interact with. And it's amazing because it still stays as a piece of art. So then we have people you know, having fun and, and, and sucking all these jellies and stuff, and that was really awesome for me to watch. You know, and creating art pieces constantly changing um, people's perception of things. So the last one I want to share is um, my last piece of uh, work, which is about um, a, few, a few months ago, a, few, a year ago. And this was based on um, sugar. So again, working with a lot of isomalt, so I started creating one piece. What you saw just now was an ice malt uh, cooked to 160 degrees and pouring it over ice. And then you start creating sugar pieces like this, which look like corals. And when I created my first piece, I looked at it and I was like, what if I did 10,000 foes again? So I used 1,100 kilos of sugar and created an experience for 1,000 people in Marina Bay Sands, uh, the Sky Park. And I uh, started doing sculptures with an underworld theme. And this was uh, the effect of it. So making lots and lots of uh, corals, having all the canopies on it. And when you enter the space again, it's, it's another world. So again, I challenge you today, what is your world like? Um, what, is, what, what is your perception of things? And I hope today I've inspired you in some way. And well, thank you for listening. And uh, my name is Janice. Twitter, Janice Wong, 2 a.m. Thank you very much.